because we're, we're doing airstrikes. And that's exactly what they did today. Russia has been putting warplanes into Syria. They're doing airstrikes. Uh, they're saying they're going after ISIS targets. Uh, the administration still refuses to say ISIS and, and says ISIL. I don't get that. Uh, I'm sure there's something behind that, but that's ridiculous. Um, so the Russians say they're going there to clean out ISIS. It turns out that they're bombing areas where ISIS is not at. They're basically just propping up uh, dictator Assad over there in Syria to keep him in power. Now, uh, this administration is so out of touch with reality. So out of touch with reality, Gene. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter comes on TV today. And let me read you one of the things he said today. Yes, please. Would you? And for the benefit of our audience... This is a link from, it looks like, Defense.gov. It's it's from the Defense Department himself. Uh, On the day that Russia is, they haven't deployed troops into the Middle East since 1980, by the way, folks, for you uh, Middle East war fans out there. So, Russia's on the move. Our enemies are on the move. Um, Russia has close uh, ties to Iran, who we just allowed to nuke up. And now they're propping up another dictator in Syria. And what does our knucklehead Secretary of Defense come out and talk about today? Um, He's talking about women in combat. As Secretary of Defense, I'm committed to seeing this through. Because attracting the best and staying the best means that whenever possible, we must open ourselves to the talents and strengths of all Americans who can contribute with excellence to our force. What the hell is he talking about? The Russians are at war... They're telling Americans to get out of Syria. They did not join the coalition. They're acting unilaterally. And our idiot Secretary of Defense is talking about women in combat? Is this administration serious? By the way, that was an amazing impression of uh, whoever you were doing just now. I believed it totally. But you're absolutely right. Russia begins airstrikes in Syria. West disputes targets. USA disarray. That's the Drudge Report at this present moment. And what they're saying, because uh, Putin's running around saying that he's hitting ISIS targets, and they're clearly not ISIS targets. They're uh, opposition targets to the regime. Um, Looked up Syria, people, when you get a chance. Uh, We've been training rebels. That was the centerpiece of Barack Obama's strategy several months ago. Him and Joe Biden came out and said we're going to train rebels. Uh, Up until this point, we spent billions of dollars in Syria. I believe the latest number they have agreed on was we've trained six rebels. And if you think I'm lying, look it up. Six rebels. Lastly on this topic, Gene, Donald Trump on the O'Reilly Factor the other night, he broke his um, ban on Fox News and went on the O'Reilly Factor. Um, The man was 100% right on Syria. He nailed it. Now, I know there's a lot of Trump haters out there, but Donald Trump called it. You know, Bill O'Reilly and a lot of the neocons out there are beating the drum saying, why don't we do something in Syria? And I want to separate myself from them right now and say that I believe what Donald Trump said pretty much hit the nail on the head. There is no good outcome in Syria. You have ICE, You have three factions. You have Assad, who used chemical weapons against his own people, enemy of the United States, terrible human being. You have ISIS, who beheads Christians, rapes little girls and boys, and does all kinds of horrific things. And you have rebels, who we have no idea who they are. We have no idea who they support. But something inside of me tells me that they're Muslim extremists that live in the Middle East. Um, they can't be good. Okay, So we have no horse in this race. So Donald Trump basically said, what do you want us to do? Let Russia go in and fight him. Who cares at this point? Do you, would, he basically called O'Reilly out and said, would you rather America be down there and dealing with this in Syria? And I can't agree to putting American troops in Syria and dealing with any of this. God bless Putin. He wants to take the lead there. At the end of the day, he wants to control Syria. Good luck with all that, my brother. And do you realize by doing that, Donald Trump just out Pauled Rand Paul? So, Think he, about it. He, he did somewhat, and I would love to hear what Rand Paul's response is to any of this. Because I'll tell you who's dead wrong on this, by the way. Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio is clueless on what's going on there. And I think he's showing his youth and immaturity in the race. Uh, I'm not going to go as far as to say he's a clown like Donald Trump. Because I think he's a decent senator. But on lots of issues, just to stand out from Donald Trump, he's taking the wrong side. And Rubio's wrong on this one. Um, I don't see how... And you know a lot of people are. John McCain and a bunch of people. I don't see how you defeat ISIS without empowering another enemy of the United States. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Let them all fight it out. Who cares at this point? All right. Time for our first break of the night. Gene and Russ behind me in lines. When we come back, we're going to be giving away a book and listening to some interviews from the Value Voters Summit that took place in Washington, D.C. 
Stay tuned for your chance to win, folks. Gina Ross, Behind the Lions, will be back right after this brief word. Are you among the 64% of Americans who believe our country is going in the wrong direction? If yes, then eVoiceAmerica.com is the political take action site we've all been waiting for. And it's really free. eVoice America provides your personal list of elected reps every time you log on. This makes it so easy to email your opinions and e-votes on top issues directly to each of our D.C. elected representatives. eVoice then publishes our e-vote majority percentages on top issues to each member of Congress and the media. Now, for the first time in history, we can know what millions of American citizens are telling Congress. No more gridlock. Join the new American majority using eVoiceAmerica.com, putting Americans in control of Congress. Visit eVoiceAmerica.com today. It's free and easy to use. That's eVoiceAmerica.com. Hey, everybody. Gene Berardelli here. And for those of you who know me, who have met me at a conference around the country, or have just even seen my photo online, you know I'm not the most fit guy in the world. In fact, exercise and I are not good friends at all. But I'm starting to do it more, and I'm starting to eat right, And I'm going to start taking diabetics from Green Turtle Bay Vitamin Company. Diabetics is the first FDA-authorized multivitamin supplement for diabetics and for those like me who are predisposed to diabetes and have difficulty absorbing nutrients. Diabetics contains ingredients not included in multivitamin formulas for the general public and is unique for people like me who have diabetes running in their family. So I'm going to start eating right, I'm going to start taking diabetics, I'm going to start exercising more, and I'm going to take you on this journey with me. That's Diabetics with a K, one of the many great supplements from Green Turtle Bay Vitamin Company. For more information, check out www.energywave.com. Behind Enemy Lines, back on the air. Gene and Russ, back behind Enemy Lines. And Russ, I know that you missed our trip. It's one of the highlights of our year, really. When we go back to D.C. for the Value Voters Summit, always a chance to reacquaint ourselves with some some old friends, make some new friends. And this time around, Russ, I got to say, Value Voters Summit, triple the size of what it was last year. Close to 3,000 attendees, a fully expanded exhibit hall, guests up the wazoo. I think we can say wazoo on the air. And it was an overall great experience we got some great interviews to play and a book to give away, a signed copy of King's Rules by Dr. Alveda King, the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King. I'm going to put you on the spot here real quick, Gene. Did you have, what did you do this time, this year, to wash off? D- don't go there. Come on. To wash off all the Jesus like I did last year, is that Tell what you're saying? Did you have to do anything this year? Because I wasn't there, folks, and I wasn't there last year either, but I, I remember reading... A controversial remark that Mr. Berardelli had made last year around this time. Yes, some haters started to hate on us about a comment I made that was in jest about having too much Jesus in my life at Value Vote or something. It wasn't necessary to sign around. It was a great, great time. We had a blast. Did we celebrate John Boehner's resignation in style? Yes, we did. And it was glorious. I'll get the real story later, I guess. Off air, pal. Off air. Right now, let's get into the interviews Here's uh, the first interview I did was with our friends Jason and David, the Benham brothers. And I can say they're friends, Russ, because you know what? They are now officially my favorite interview of all time on Behind Enemy Lines. Genuine guys who just happen to be in the spotlight for you know their, their views and they've stood up strong for their views. I know we're not social conservatives on this show, but whenever you see someone standing up for what they believe in, you got to support them. And that's why I like them, those guys. Hashtag man crush. Go ahead. <laughs> and it comes through in this interview. Check it out right now. Gene Berardelli, Behind Enemy Lines, and behind the stage after the Ohio Christian Breakfast with Jason and David Benham. Guys, great to see you again. Thanks for coming on. Good seeing you too, brother. We saw you out there in the crowd. Oh, yeah, you did. Okay, I was the one with like the third helping of the breakfast back there. We saw. can't miss that face. Oh. It's too pretty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, now I'm definitely blushing. Uh, so, guys, let's talk a little bit about what you uh, said on stage earlier today. Uh, first of all, a huge crowd here. Yeah, it was a packed crowd. I mean, as a matter of fact, the president of Ohio Christian told us, he said that he, uh, they had one room, and then they sold out so fast, they built up to a bigger room, so they had to actually shift venues, and this one was absolutely packed out. So, I mean, it was great. I mean, people are uh, 
pretty bothered about this religious liberty assault in America, and it's time for Christians and Americans to step up. Well, it's definitely an assault on all fronts now. I mean, we see it, and thank goodness it's finally in the forefront of the presidential debates, really, uh, as we're looking to pick our next leader in 2016. Oh, isn't it? Isn't it crazy? I mean, just imagine if all of these guys were talking like this in 2012, and and all of them were running. Now, of course, we had several of them that were, but I mean, this is the this is this is the uh, the issues of our times, especially these these social issues in terms of marriage, in terms of uh, life, and all of these things. So, where a, where a candidate stands on that is going to determine whether or not they get our vote. And a lot of these Christians and a lot of these conservatives out here, it's it's the same determining factor. And you know what? We were here last year, and isn't it amazing how much just this conference has expanded? It's, it's like exploded. When you go down to the exhibition hall, it's almost triple the size of what it was last year. Yeah, it's grown by, what, uh, 100 or 200 percent. Um, and, and the Family Research Council is fabulous because they're willing to step in and speak the truth. They speak it in love. Uh, they're strong on policy in terms of conservative politics and, and other things like this. Yet there's also very much of a reunion-type feel at an event like this. Uh, Jason and I, as well as several other folks around the country that have been targeted, we're all here together. We're all hugging in the, in the lobby area and talking and saying, oh, so is your lawsuit done? Yeah, well, you know, I lost my bakery and, well, but I'm still selling fire. I mean, it's just amazing how all this works together here in, in D.C. A- absolutely right. And, you know, one of the things I can't help but think about is we're going to have a lot of candidates here today, right? And... There's going to be some that are going to be just giving lip service to the crowd of what they want to hear. And then there are some that are actually going to resonate and show that they truly believe. Do you agree that there are some candidates up here that are just here for the, the publicity hit and to move on? Well, for sure. You know, and I, and I don't fault them. You know, maybe they don't have the same thing stirring inside their heart that we do. But, you know, they're here and they're trying to win a presidential nomination. But there are those uh, definitely that have the spirit of the Lord all up inside them, and they're just going to go out there. And I think that uh, the, the spirit that's in them will connect with the spirit that's in the crowd, and I think it should be a really good day. Oh, I think it's going to be a, a great day, great weekend as well. Uh, when we last spoke at CPAC, I asked you guys if you guys had a favorite yet as far as who's on stage for, for the nomination. I'm not going to ask you who your favorite is right now, but you're starting to narrow it down a little bit? Yeah, we're narrowing it down. We're spending time talking uh, to the candidates. We're also uh, looking at the viability of a, of a, of a candidacy and, and the folks that can actually be electable. But really where we are, resolute in our heart, is where do they stand on life? Where do they stand on marriage? Where do they stand on religious liberty? Where do they stand on this Iran deal? I mean, we're looking at this, and, and defunding Planned Parenthood. These are really important social issues, yet at the same time, I mean, I get it. If they're running for Republican uh, nomination, they're already going to have a, a, a general, decent understanding of the economy, and, and they'll you know vote toward our entrepreneurial leanings. But uh, really, the social issues are the differentiating factor for us. And it's pervasive throughout every issue. We talk about the Iran deal. Uh, there's so many human rights violations going on on in Iran right now between, you know, we're not even negotiating to get the hostages out, things like that. I mean, it it shows a hypocrisy on on behalf of not only the administration, but just Americans in general. How, uh, I mean, we we are demanding, you know, that that RIFRA, the Religious Freedom Restoration Acts and all these, these are terrible, they're discriminatory, and you've got Apple and all these other uh, IBM, these companies coming in and saying, we're going to pull business out of Indiana. I remember when that happened with Governor Pence. Well, look at these, these companies have... Com- they actually have offices and locations in many of these nations that are they, they are terrible with human rights. It's like what a hypocrisy in America. You mentioned Riffer. I remember Governor Cuomo my, from my own you know People's Republic of New York State uh, saying that he wasn't going he's going to cut off business with Indiana, but then he got into a flight to Havana. It was, it's absolute hypocrisy coming from the other side. Uh, Jason, when you're looking at the other side and, and what they're seeing, are you seeing any any discussion at all about the same issues that we're having here about? faith, freedom, and family. No, I think that uh, they have to avoid those issues. Of course, although we did get our, our, um, our vice president just weighed in on abortion, and I think that his logic and his reasoning shows a fundamental flaw in the way that we see religion. He said that he believes that now life begins at conception and that abortion is probably morally wrong, but that he would never act on those beliefs in terms of utilizing the position of influence and power and authority that he has to do anything about legalized abortion. And so he basically has revealed to us in, an, in a prime example of religion without the actions, which basically means you have belief but not the behavior to follow it up, and that's not true religion. 
So uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you guys about, of course, uh, the Pope was just in.